Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. During the pandemic, I quit my job at LinkedIn, basically going from 160K plus dollars in base salary plus equity to virtually nothing. It was a hard decision to make and took months pondering on, but ultimately it ended up being one of the most enlightening decisions of my career. In this video, I talk about what I'm doing now, which spoiler alert is starting my own company, the reason why I decided to do so, a framework that helped me rationalize why the right decision for me, despite what other people thought, and my advice for people who are starting off in their career and deciding between a startup and a big corporate. Let's go! If you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Mika Reyes, a Filipino based in Silicon Valley, previously working as a product manager and now a founder of a stealth company. In this channel, we talk about careers in tech and product management, starting a business, productivity, and cheap and minimalist personal finances. Consider subscribing to learn more. When at LinkedIn, I was really excited to work for such a prestigious company. I remember coming in, eyes wide open, so excited to soak in all of the learnings. And then I remember feeling very differently towards the end of my tenure. For so long, I tried to rationalize why I felt so differently. So many people were so happy being in LinkedIn. Such a great culture, such great benefits, such an amazing salary. But I felt like something was missing until I found a framework that helped me rationalize exactly what I was looking for that I couldn't find. And that framework was the autonomy impact access. Basically, if you're an ambitious person looking for growth in your career, if you're looking for high levels of autonomy in decision making and high levels of impact in terms of the people that you're impacting the lives of. In this autonomy and impact access, the goal is to get here. But when we start off in our career journeys, we're basically over here, bottom left, and we're choosing between high autonomy and low impact or high impact and low autonomy. We have to choose one or the other. Do you want more autonomy within the organization in terms of decision making or choosing what projects you wanna work on? Or do you want more impact in terms of the people you're able to reach and change the lives of? Being in a startup will give you the autonomy without necessarily the impact of reaching millions of other humans, especially if the startup hasn't yet found product market. Being in a large company will give you impact of reach, but without the autonomy to easily decide what happens with that reach, given the bureaucracy involved with getting things done. As we grow in our careers, we move up or to the right of this graph. You start with working in a startup, you grow the number of users and find product market fit until you reach a higher level of impact. When you start in a company, you rise up the ladder and get promoted to higher levels of decision-making power which gives you higher levels of autonomy. So the decision you're making when you're starting off your career is what's more important to you? It's a hard trade-off to make, especially when you're starting off in your career. When I started out, I definitely didn't know whether I wanted more levels of impact or more levels of autonomy. After working for close to two years in both big corporation and startup world, I basically decided that at this point in my career, I wanted to have higher levels of autonomy and faster decision-making cycles that weren't bogged down by bureaucracy. In a larger corporation, it was hard finding those high levels of autonomy because I had to build consensus with all of the decision makers and stakeholders in deciding what color button to choose or what copy was best. Whereas in a startup, you're incentivized and you want to work faster and launch things quickly to learn and iterate your way into product market fit. At some point working in a big company, I felt that my growth was stunted because of all of the bureaucracy and how long it took for us to launch things and learn things quickly. I felt that I was more so learning how to write good emails and manage up and create alignment and manage risk, which by the way are really good skills to have, but just not the skills that I wanted to learn at that time. So I crossed over to the high autonomy and low impact quadrant and made the decision to start my own company and be a creator on the side. A common question I get from folks starting in their career is, should I work for a startup or should I work for a big corporation? 
Now that I've seen both, I can weigh the pros and cons. Let's start with startups. Pros are permissionless action, and that's what I meant by high autonomy in making decisions. Working with a startup is also somewhat attractive to companies that are looking and filtering for entrepreneurial mindsets. In startups, you also have the ability to wear many different hats and perform many different functions, which is great for a person like me that desires a lot of the variety in thinking. And lastly, the startup environment lends itself to stronger relationships because you're working the same goals and projects for long periods of time. Cons, you're doing everything versus focusing and doing one thing really, really well. There's not a lot of data to work with in de-risking situations or decisions. You literally might have one or two data points with the people that you're doing user research with. Who knows which user is right or wrong. You have no brand name that might vet your expertise because the startup is still trying to find that niche and make a brand for itself. And of course, you won't have as luxurious a set of benefits or salary. Now, what are the pros and cons of working in a big corporation? You're able to impact a large number of people's lives. And that's what I mean by high impact. Immediately, I was able to launch a feature to millions of users on LinkedIn within my first month of working there, which felt very invigorating. You, of course, have a good brand name attached to yourself, which lends to higher credibility. You have virtually limitless data to work with and analyze certain decisions or risks you're going to take. You're also able to work with a community of other product managers or data scientists, and so you learn from each other and you learn about all these best practices that work well in organizations that you can take elsewhere. That was one of the nicest things for me because I was able to learn how other product managers wrote specs or thought about data or interpreted user research in a way that I wouldn't have been able to stretch my mind in before. And lastly, of course, better benefits and money. At LinkedIn, we had $2,000 to spend on gym equipment and financial planners. We had two weeks of company shutdown where nobody worked at all at the same time and we were paid really well. Some cons, analyzing every single metric and de-risking every single situation before you're able to launch and do something about it. You're consensus building and so you have to make sure that all the different stakeholders agree or give a yes in certain decisions. Sometimes if you're transitioning from a big company to a smaller startup and don't have that startup expertise or startup experience, that might work against you because you have a big company bureaucratic mindset. You might be working on a small part and small strategy in the entire ecosystem of products versus the entire strategy for the company. And lastly, office politics, enough said. My takeaway from this is figure out what you think is more important to you. And despite what the naysayers say or what you think that other people think, ultimately it's your career, it's your life. Choose what you think is the best decision that will be important for you and your growth. And if you're ever looking for help in how to revamp your resume or use LinkedIn to find that next opportunity for you, be it in a startup or a big company. You can check out my videos that talk about tips I have for you for your resume and ways that you can leverage LinkedIn to 10x your job seeking experience from a LinkedIn PM or I guess X LinkedIn PM. Tune in next time and good luck with your journey. Bye! A four- a four work. Ugh. A common question I get from folk, folk across all the different stake hur stick hurdles, stick hurdles in a big corporation. It was far. <laughs> Basically, if you're an ambition, <laughs> stop looking at me. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> that point in consensus with all of the. <laughs>